bar two starts the same as bar number one. I'll pull the bellows out to where they probably are once you've played those first couple of the bars. So, bar number two is all on the G row, all normal heads. So you start with the A and the E, and the little finger goes up to that C note, you played it in bar one. Then we return to the E. So, still in this position, plus two, pause plus two. Now notice we've got two quavers, and then this C is a dotty crotchet. It comes in on beat two, the dot to the side of the note adds on half as much again. So it comes in on beat two, like I said, it's held for the whole of beat two, half of beat three, and that final E quaver comes in on the end count of three. So it's one and two, three and. One and two, three and. So we've got a few note types here, haven't we? If we go back to the beginning, this first note of the tune in bar nil, the pickup bar was a crotchet. It's a filled in head with a stem. And then in bar number one, it's all quavers. When we have more than one quaver, we join them with this beam along the top. When we have a single quaver, of course, the beam kind of drops into it like this hook or a flag, some people call this, okay? So in bar number two, the one I've just done, two quavers, a dotted crotchet, and a quaver. So that's counted one and two, three and. Now bars of three don't make sense on their own. You always need the next bar to get the sense. Let's figure out how the bass fits with this. The A bass note goes with that first note of A. The first of the two A minor chords is played simultaneously with that dotted crotchet and then you play another A minor chord before you play that final E on the right hand side. Now the bass line fits perfectly with the counting. One, two, three, um, pa, pa. And you can't shift that, okay? The one, two, three, the on beats, that's immovable. So everything else has to be counted around that. So one and two, three and, okay? So let's play from the beginning up to that point. Close the bellows. 